Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. I remember the first service that we ever did. And I remember the first message that I ever did. And I remember the church being kind of cold, maybe because I was wet um, from trying to get in that door. But um, the very first message that I ever preached in this church was um, that from that scripture that says, he must become greater and I must become less. Talking about how we surrender to God and, and live God's plan for our lives, not our own. And it's funny because, you know, I, I remember doing it, you know, and I remember how I stood on the, the platform and everything that I said in that church. And it was an interesting little church. It was old and kind of drafty and cold, and it was kind of unusual, you know, that place. And, um, and, and I think about that, and I think, you know, it's, it's uh, 29 years later, and that's still the same thing I'm saying today. I haven't really changed you know, uh, I think every time that I will stand up and minister, it almost always goes back to that. You know, our lives are surrendered to God, you know, because to me, um, that was the most important thing. That's the thing when I first accepted the Lord, you know, and you all know that story. Um, that relationship with God was the thing that set God apart in my life, you know, when when I cried out to God and I was all by myself, and um, that's something I just thought about lately. I, this year will be 40 years that I've been a, a Christian for 40 years this, this year. And uh, right around this time, too, yeah. And um, it was weird because we went back to that church, Deb and I did, the church that I went to, the, the Catholic church that I went to that I... Um, cried out to God, and, and it was, I was all by myself, and, and Debbie knows what it's like when you go in there, it's very cold in the tile floors, and actually, I was just thinking about that recently, too, and, and I went in there, and I just felt like I was just, at the end of myself, I had, you know, I was, I hadn't, you know, from the outside, I, I was okay if you looked at my life, but on the inside, I was very empty in my life, um, and just remembering that one sentence, if you ask Jesus to come in your life, he will and he'll help you. And um, I just talked to Alex, the guy who told me that just not that long ago when we were going over that whole story. And, and, I, and I asked Jesus to come into my life and how my life changed. But the thing that impacted me so greatly wasn't only that when I, when I said, God, if you're real, Jesus, if you're real, I need to know you in my life tonight. When I, when I prayed, that was my prayer of crying out to God. And when I did that, it's like the weight of the world just rolled off me, and all of a sudden I had hope. And I had hope in my life. And when, when that happened, that was very powerful to me. But what really struck me was God spoke to me in my heart, and he said, Guy, everything's going to be all right. And I thought it was pretty powerful because he used my name. You know, he said Guy. And um, I think there's, there's, there's things in our lives that, that become anchors, and I think that became an anchor for me because throughout 40 years and the ups and downs and the, the things that are tough and the things that, are, that have been um, hard and the things that have been even when they're smooth, um, the thing that has stuck with me is the reality of God, the reality of the, the presence and the, the fellowship and the realness of God. That he's not, he's never been a religion. I grew up in a religion, and I stopped going to church as soon as I could start to drive. Because I would tell my parents, well, I'll go to church at another time, and I never went. <laughs> I went to breakfast, I went every place else, but I didn't go to church anymore. And I'd just show up back home later, and I'm like, yeah, I went to church. And because I, I, religion wasn't doing it, and Christianity, if it ever became a religion to me, it, it starts to die, you know, because it's all the things that you do to try to make God happy, and we push off the relationship with God for all these things, you know, like we have to do all of this, all of these things that are going to, we think God's going to be happy with all this, but um, our relationship with God kind of falls apart, 
And the scripture in the Bible that says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Lately, I've been studying a few things. And um, when I studied that out, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The, the best way to picture it would be like this. You have one glass over here that's full of water. You have another glass over here that's full of water and you have a pitcher in the middle. And this is you. If you pour in 10%, God pours in 10%. If you pour in 20%, God pours in 20%. The percentage we give is the percentage he gives. The more we draw near, the more we surrender, the, you know, and the more we let go of the things of this world or anything else that would take the place in our heart that belongs to him, the more he comes close. We are the one who sets the standard of our relationship with God. He does not. Because he's the gentleman, he doesn't override us. He doesn't make us give. He doesn't make us tithe. He doesn't make us come to church. He doesn't make us get saved. He just offers himself, and we have to make the steps. We step close, he steps close. We step closer, we step closer. We go 100%, he goes 100%. It's up to us. It's not up to him. You know, um, we had lunch with uh, John, and um, we, we were talking, and I, I was telling John that uh, this, I have faced the probably as a being surrounded with things that are going wrong, the greatest in 40 years now recently, three months. And I have probably had the greatest spiritual life I've had in the last three months. Because what it caused me to do when everything starts to fall apart around your life and there's nothing left, there's, there's no comfort zone. When things are fine, there's this comfort zone of you don't have to you don't even have to be in faith. Money's coming in, you're working, things are okay, you're cruising, everything's fine. But when everything starts kind of falling off, you realize where you're really at. And I, the way I explained it to John was, what I started doing was I started looking over my life and I started looking, where in my life am I leaking? You know, where, what's going on? Is there any areas in my life that I know I should be doing this, but I'm not doing this? And I started going through my whole life, and I started looking at things and tightening down. This is all by prayer and waiting on God and seeing, okay, you know, and there's things he'd remind me of, and I'd go back and I'd say, yep, i got to fix that. So I, I really, my life became for three months this spiritual tune-up almost. Then I came to this thing where I started realizing Wow, I haven't been in faith in a really, really long time. You know, because life has gotten easy for me, and I didn't have to really believe God, believe anything. Just roll with it. But then I started realizing my faith isn't where my faith should be. So I started building myself back up in faith. And like I said, I stand here before you right now. I don't think in my Christian walk I have had a time when I have felt that I have been stronger in faith and tighter in my walk with God than today. When things that are going on around my life seem to be the worst they've been in like 40 years, I am stronger in my faith and my relationship with God today than I've been probably in 40 years. This has been life-changing. And they were talking to some friends of ours that live in North Carolina. And they were just asking me some things. And I said, well, you know, I started sharing a little bit of this stuff. And I says, now, don't get me wrong. I said, don't look at the things that I'm telling you as feel bad for me. I said, because I don't feel bad for me. I said, I feel that, and God didn't do this. But do you know if you let your life slip and slide long enough, you're going to end up someplace you don't want to be. And I'm not saying I was in any kind of gross sin or doing anything that's really wrong. It's just 
I let myself walk out of obedience long enough till things started to come apart, and they will do that. It just happens. God doesn't cause it. It just happens. Because you open your life up, I opened my life up to the devil, then I didn't get in faith, and I allowed my faith to get weak, and then you get smacked up the side of the head, and you have absolutely no idea what to do. But thank God, the anchor in my life has always been, guy, everything's going to be okay, and there's a relationship with God, and God's real. So instead of being pushed away from God, I was telling this because I'm kind of referring back to the conversation we had. I was telling John, I go, you know, John, this didn't push me away from God. All it did was push me right into him. Because I started digging down and I started remembering what it was like to, to be in faith, to, to stand in the presence of God in, in knowing that I've been I've been forgiven, that I am the righteousness of God. And all of these things that seem to be just growing in my life right now, I'm so thankful for this. You know? Okay, I'll tell you something. I've told a lot of stories, but there are stories that happened in my life that I never talk about. I probably never will ever talk about. And there's things that have happened in situations, and um, they were very hurtful to me, very uh, hurtful in my life. And the people that were involved in those things, I could never forgive them. Even as a Christian, 40 years. Well, you know, yeah, close, because it just happened just recently, right? So here, there's this thing in my life where I would try to forgive them, and, and before I knew it, I was, I always, I used to tell Debbie, I would lay awake at night and just think about revenge. I would just think about revenge on these people that on the this and and I'm a Christian. I love God. I'm reading the Bible. I'm praying, but I can't get rid of these people. You know? And I can't not not forgive. I I try. I would forgive them. Then I'd be back in the whole revenge thinking again. I'd forgive them and thinking, man, I wish I just had magical powers. I would just, you know, turn them into a donkey or whatever. You know, you know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That, and and I'm, this is the way I was thinking, you know, I just couldn't let these people go. Well, through this last three-month journey, God knows, God knows, God, he's, well, God knows everything. <laughs> he's not only everywhere, he knows everything, and he's all the time. And so, just recently, I realized more than I ever have how the old guy was crucified with Christ and there's a new creature now. And when that hit me, when that hit me, I didn't even have to forgive those people anymore because what they did was to the old guy. They didn't do that to this guy. This is a new guy. They might have did it to that guy but I'm not that guy. I'm just not that guy. Change, that alone changed my life. That right there changed. I mean, so many things. I don't even struggle with it anymore. I don't even think about it anymore because God knew, listen, you, you're having trouble with forgiving, but why are you trying to forgive something that wasn't even done to you? God's so stinking smart. Oh my gosh, he is just smart. He knows everything. He has become more real to me in three months, I think, than, than ever. I, my prayer life has changed. My time in the Word has changed. Things I'm seeing in the Word have changed. Now my prayer is God, because I know, and this is, again, something John and I talked about. I said, John... How I went into this is not how I'm coming out of this. But now my prayer is, God, when I come out of this and things get better, because they will, they'll be better than they ever were. 
in every area that I have because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now I'm like, God, when I come out of this, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to get faith sloppy. I don't want to get comfortable. I want to stay hungry. I want to stay with this desire of fellowship. So, so what I have, I believe as the Holy Ghost has been leading me, he's been leading me into a building like a structure of living that I'm going to take from this place out of this place. I, I feel like now, after 40 years, I feel like I'm only just beginning. I feel like there's, I'm, I just turned 65, I feel like there's just, I, I have so much expectancy, like a new chapter or something that's happening. In the world, without Jesus and things going wrong, people just, they have no place to go. But with God, we have God. With God, we have the Holy Ghost. We have the creator of the universe living on the inside of us. All wisdom. I'm so thankful, you know. It's been, uh, it's been an interesting journey. But it's been a good journey. It's been rich. <sighs> the things we learn right? The things we learn. Faithful God. And what I would say if I was going to share anything that we could take home is um, I, I'll read a scripture. First John First John in verse uh, chapter five and verse twenty one it says this Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. And in the Amplified Bible it says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols, from false gods, from anything and everything that would occupy the place in your heart due to God from any sort of substitute for him that would take first place in your life. Amen. So be it. You know what I found myself doing so often was when things would get rough, but things weren't bad, if I felt a challenge, I would run to a hobby or I'd run to television or I'd run to a distraction, but not run to God. <laughs> But the Bible says that we should keep ourselves from anything that would take the place of God. There shouldn't be anything that takes God's place. There shouldn't be anything that we do that would occupy our time or entertain us or take us out of life. Just to keep us entertained for just a little while and forget where we're at. We should make that God, that we go to him in that time. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? You know how easy that is? Oh, you got something and it's just, oh, geez, you know, I think I'll just look at Instagram. <laughs> you know, that's the solution. You know, I think I'll do this. I think I'll do that. And it's, you're occupied with something else. But little children, keep yourselves from idols, from anything and everything that would take the place in your heart that belongs to God, that we give our God our whole hearts because he gave us everything in Jesus just to bring us to this place, just to put us in a position to know him. Amen? If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I just want to share with you for a moment the importance of receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You might believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and the King of glory. But you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So you can just say a little prayer right while you're there. I'm going to just pray with you. Say, Father God, thank you for Jesus. 
And thank you for the life that he has given me. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. If you believe that in your heart and you just said that, that makes you a born-again Christian. It doesn't mean you understand everything. Hallelujah. It's a lifetime of learning of the goodness of God. Be acquainted with the Bible and all that's in it. And when somebody teaches something, go to the Bible yourself and start searching through it to see if what they're saying is true. Find a good Bible church. Amen. A Holy Ghost Bible church that teaches the Bible. Amen. And you are welcome here if you're in the area. If not, just begin to communicate with God and ask God what you should do. Amen. He will show you which church that you need to be a part of, where you will grow and flourish. Also, your family will. Amen. 